Father God, Lord, we thank you for being a God who, from beginning to end, you remain the same. You are worthy of a thousand hallelujahs, and we have from now until eternity to speak of your great name, Lord. Lord, we celebrate today the gift that you gave us, the gift of new life, the gift of a second chance, the gift of forgiveness, the gift that brought love. And it is in that name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. For many of us, this weekend, this month, is one that we celebrate for a specific reason. There's a large group of us of this world that celebrates it for other reasons. But I want to start with a question, and, and we're going to sing some more songs. This is a special weekend where um, we just get to celebrate the gift that God has given us in his son, Jesus. But the question is, is, have you ever been given a sign or a signal and you completely missed it? Maybe, husbands, that's a sign from your wife giving you the look that you need to be quiet before you get yourself in more trouble. I heard never. It's probably Mark over there, or Rob. <laughs> Or, or, or maybe it's your kid giving you a sign of help, I'm in trouble, or I'm uncomfortable. I know Adeline and Isla both give me that look. But so many times there are signs and signals that we are given and we are just completely oblivious to it. In sports, so much of what happens in a play revolves around signs or play calling or giving someone a signal just this past week, it happened in a game where, a, in a crucial game, in overtime, if you're a Bills fan, I'm sorry, but player went one way, he threw the ball another way, completely missing the sign he thought he was supposed to go the right way. I'll never forget, speaking of sports, one of the biggest games of my high school time we were playing in, in Texas and we had the lead. And since there was no shot clock, what we decided to do was do what we called box of one. And if you don't know what I'm about to say, it's fine. You'll get the point at the end of my story. But we would basically have someone at the top of the key and we had each person on the corner of the paint. And when that guy would dribble one way, the guy from the bottom would come up the guy at the top of the key would set the pick, leaving him open to get the ball. And we would just keep doing that. And we knew that if we could just stall, we would win the game. We didn't want to put the ball into the hands of the other team because they had this seven-foot giant that whenever he got the ball, he scored. So we're like, we can't do that. We just got to hold the ball. There was no shot clock, so why not? So we kept doing this, and all of a sudden, one of our players thought he saw or heard a play call from our coach, so he says. And he took the ball, went right through the middle and took a jump shot, missing the shot, giving the ball to the other team. They throw the ball, the sky shoots a three, gets fouled, and they take the lead, and we lose the game. He missed the sign, or he decided to not even pay attention to it and take matters into his own hands. Luke 2, verse 1 through 20, tells us about the beginning of a life, the beginning of a gift that this world would receive, something that was predicted, that was talked about, that was, if you read the Old Testament, there is word and there is, is prophetic words about a coming Messiah. It tells us all about the one who would come to save us, to save the world. The birth of Jesus, the Son of God. Luke tells us that the birth of Jesus is roughly six months after 
the birth of John, which is how we know that they were so close in age. Luke 2 also tells us that Jesus, the Son of God, the coming Messiah, would be born in a specific town named Bethlehem. Why Bethlehem? Why that town? Why not anywhere else? Well, we know that it isn't where Mary and Joseph were at the time when they received this message, but we know that they traveled over 70 miles from Galilee to a little town of Bethlehem. And the reason for it was simply for tax purposes. Tax reasons. See, Joseph was, was um, part of the descendant of David, and for taxation purposes only, he had to go to Bethlehem where Roman taxation was administered locally. That's where he had to end up. And for that reason, they go to this little town of Bethlehem, and that is where Jesus needed to be born. Have you ever looked back on your life and realized that you made it through a situation in your life because of something silly like taxes? Or or maybe it's you forget something at home and we've, Maybe you've heard this happen all the time. You forget something and you go back to your house, get back on the road only just to see an accident happen and said, if I didn't go back to get that from my house, that could have been me. Jesus would be born exactly where he needed to be. And God's plan continued to move over despite the world trying to break it apart. It wasn't by accident that Joseph had to go back to Bethlehem and Jesus had to be born there. It was with intention. God had a purpose for the life of his son and it had to happen this way. Jesus had to be born in Bethlehem and God made it so. And so he's born the one who would walk the earth and claim to be the Son of God, the Messiah, the one who would would walk and heal and preach and teach and disciple, this man was born. This was the gift. The one we refer back to in the Old Testament. The one who would walk the earth and say, it is I, I am the Son of God, was birthed. But even then, even though God would send his son, would would give us the ultimate gift, as Luke 2 tells us, the reason why we celebrate in this season, even then, people would not believe. People would miss the sign. People would reject him. It's called the sin of unbelief. The sin of unbelief, what does that actually mean? The Jews had been asking for a sign. The Jews had been asking for a Messiah. The chosen people of God were wanting and hoping and praying that God would send the Messiah. And they were expecting this huge, triumphant entry into the world. In a, in a fiery chariot with trumpets loud, just in all of God's glory, he would send his son. And that was what they were expecting. Instead, they got a baby in a manger. The picture of humility, who Jesus actually was. And so they expected something. They didn't get what they thought they were going to get, and so they rejected it. They said, there was no way this could be the son of God. This baby in a manger, no way. They expected a sign and got a different one, and so they chose to not believe it. Jesus was born. God sent the world a sign. We know from the story, the star that would be above him, those who would come, give gifts, celebrate the one who had been born. God sent us the gift. God sent us a sign. 
We had a choice back then, and we have a choice today. Do we or do we not accept God's gift in his son, Jesus Christ, the one who promises to deliver us from anything that we're going through, the one who lets us live freely and walk in his grace and his mercy to be called his son? What does it even mean to accept this gift, to accept Jesus Accepting Jesus, the gift of Jesus, means dying to yourself so that the only one who's righteous can live in you, so that you and I can have another chance at life and live eternally in a design which we were created to exist in. That was the sole purpose of the birth of Jesus, so that we could have a second chance at life. This time of year, we don't just celebrate the birth of Christ, we celebrate the reason for it. Jesus is the reason, and what he did is our resolve. Will you daily choose to give up up your life and receive Jesus? It wasn't enough for God just to send his son and live a perfect life and die, and we'll get more into that a little bit later. But he had to accomplish what none of us could accomplish. He had to live like us. Have the temptations, have the flesh be among him and defy all odds so that we could be blameless. So that we could stand before his father, our father. And when our name comes up, And we see all of our shortcomings and all of our failures. Jesus says, it doesn't matter. I came so that he could be saved. I came so that she could be saved. It doesn't matter what you've done, who you are, your past. This was the gift so that you can live freely in his son. And his name is Jesus. Will you choose to receive that gift today?